Melvin Young. Mr. Speaker, I stand in support of the proposed Cash Shield Life, which seeks to ensure that all Singaporeans will be protected by insurance and receive some basic financial aid in the event that one should end up with a severe disability later in life. I'm happy to note that Cash Shield Life delivers upon a big improvement from its predecessor, the Elder Shield, by providing higher payouts for life. This provides better protection for those suffering from disabilities. And I'm sure that with better living environment and better medical care, there will be more who will outlive the six-year limit on payouts under the current Elder Shield. But while Care Shield Life is an improvement, I do have some concerns that I would like to raise. First, let me touch on the qualification for payouts. The proposed Care Shield Life provides payouts for those deemed to be suffering from severe disabilities, and this is defined as a person being unable to perform three out of six activities of daily living, or ADLs. I'd like to ask the Minister, why start considering people as severely disabled only when they are unable to perform at least three ADLs? In many cases, being unable to perform two ADLs or even one ADL, such as the inability to transfer oneself from a bed to a wheelchair, would be considered as a severe impairment to living life. Mr. Speaker, in the normal course of aging, we would find that the inability to perform basic ADLs would start gradually and increase progressively. I'd like to ask the Minister if there are ways, in addition to Care Shield Life, that we could identify and intervene early and provide assistance to those who gradually lose the ability to perform ADLs. Because in some instances, help may come too late if we wait until one loses his ability to perform three ADLs. Second, I would like to ask the Minister if the Ministry of Health knows how many Singaporeans who have at least three ADLs today and who are currently under Elder Shield coverage have made claims or are receiving payouts. How many have not? My point is how can we help to ensure that those who are severely disabled who are the most in need of the payouts would have an easy time qualifying for them. Would they have to travel to the hospital to be assessed? Or could local GPs do house calls to make the assessment? How many GPs are there currently qualified to make such house calls? And how can we simplify the assessment process so that those in need would not have to wait for an inordinate amount of time before receiving their payouts? Third, I'd like to also ask how did the committee decide on the payout quantum of $600? Many residents that I spoke to questioned if $600 would be a sufficient amount, taking into consideration the challenges faced by one who is severely disabled, one who has inability to perform three ADLs. It is not difficult to imagine that those defined as such would require the constant help of a caregiver, but $600 would be insufficient to pay for the employment of one domestic helper. Next, I'd like to touch on the transitional subsidies. As part of the initial rollout of Care Shield Life, the committee has proposed to provide transitional subsidies of up to $250 spread over the first five years to help Singaporeans ease into the new scheme. What is the rationale of providing the subsidy only for the first five years after the introduction of Care Shield Life? What about those who will be 30 years old from 2025? Should they not also be eligible for such transitional subsidy? Would the Ministry consider making this transitional subsidy permanent beyond the first five years for future cohorts of Singaporeans? Finally, I would like to raise a couple of concerns regarding possibly causing unintended consequences through implementing Care Shield Life as it is proposed right now. Firstly, I think many members have already spoken about this, women will have to pay higher premiums than men. It is projected that premiums for women will be around 25% higher than that for men of the same cohort. According to the 2017 Labour Force Report by the Ministry of Manpower, women are more likely than men to stay outside 
the labour force, and they made up 64% of residents outside the labour force in 2017. Family responsibilities was the top reason given which kept females outside the labour force. According to a study by consumer research firm Value Penguin, released also last year in 2017, men earn nearly 20% more than women in Singapore. And in some industries, this wage gap can be as much as 40%. Mr. Speaker, statistics show that labour participation of women is lower than men, and on average, women earn less than men. I'm not a woman. I'm not a woman, but surely we can find means to collectively offset the projected increase in healthcare spending for women due to their longer lifespan. I think many members have already spoken to ask for equality in premiums, and I hope the Ministry of Health can seriously consider having equal payment of premiums for both men and women. Secondly, the looming uncertainty surrounding future premiums is concerning. While it is reassuring that the government has guaranteed that no Singaporeans will lose coverage due to the inability to pay their premiums, many are concerned if premiums will remain affordable in future. A recent news article reported that insurers offering integrated shield plans have made losses for the second year in a row. And with that, news report says there is a possible increase in IP premiums in the years ahead. Would premiums for casual life eventually become an expensive burden for Singaporeans? Before I conclude, I'd like to provide some feedback on the public communications on casual life. I've asked many residents what they thought of the proposed scheme. A common response is that the scheme is simply too complicated. Individuals do not quite understand how the scheme would impact them personally. How much premiums would I need to pay? Would my premiums continue to increase over time? What happens if I lost my job and cannot afford to pay the premiums for the period when I'm unemployed? These questions often relate to personal circumstances. Mr. Speaker, as our MOH colleagues would know, I myself have sat through numerous briefings and presentations on cash shield life. And after each session, I find myself learning new information about the scheme. I'm certain that our MOH officers are working very hard to communicate the scheme to Singaporeans. But the challenge remains that the scheme impact, impacts individuals differently. Perhaps the Ministry can consider setting up a cash shield life hotline or in today's technology, a chatbot to address individuals' concerns and queries more comprehensively. With that, Mr. Speaker, I support the introduction of Cashew Life.